Hi, my name is Rich Parada. I am the lecturer at Confetti in the HE Games Art Department, and I am going to be drawing Rick Sanchez while being asked questions. This is going to be fun. Can't wait. Mm -hmm. Well, um, in 1993, I, during one of my uh, sojourns at one of my many universities that I attended, I managed to get an internship at Marvel Comics when I was at the right young age of 22 years old. And initially I said that I'm too old for comics, which of course is not true. What happened was, was as soon as I walked in there, I was hooked. And after a couple of months, I asked to see if I can get a job or a position over at Marvel, which I did. And I wound up working at the art corrections department, which that means if any pages came in incorrect or wrong, I was in charge of fixing the art. And then after about a year of doing that, I became a freelance artist and worked on just about as many titles as you could think of, ranging from Avengers to X-Men to Spider-Man to Cable to just about most titles you could think of. The only ones I didn't work on were um, Fantastic Four and Punisher. That was pretty much it. So I've lost count on how many titles that my name is on. So it's, it's like, it was a lot of fun. I worked for them for about a good 10 years. It was great. Loved it. Anything. Anything that has to do with drawing. And creating is my favorite thing, period. That's really it. I mean, because it's just, just a thrill of trying to find out something new or seeing if I can see it in a different angle or just creating in and of itself because it's something that I'm meant to do, something I'm, I love doing and I've always done and I will keep doing until, uh, until the day I die, quite frankly. I can't. It, it's, it's hard to really describe. Um, the only one that I would usually draw, the, the one that I loved the most when I was a child um, was Nightcrawler from the X-Men. He's an unusual character. He has the three toes and he has the three fingers and he has the prehensile tail and he teleports and when he teleports he leaves a big stink behind him because it's, it's, it's a smell of brimstone. And for some reason, because he's able to teleport one way or the other and the way that he looked, I really liked the character. You know, and I, I kind of resonated with him a little bit because growing up in New York, especially in Staten Island, New York, where the majority of people are usually either policemen, firemen, or they go to the, they cross the Staten Island Ferry into New York to work in an office. I was one of the only artists in the school that I was going to, so I kind of felt like the odd man out. And the appearance of Nightcrawler, AKA Kurt Wagner, kind of mirrored how I felt when I was a child. So I think I gravitated towards that character. And he's also the most versatile anyway, so. He's also the biggest challenge. It's hard to draw two, it's harder to draw two fingers instead of four, believe it or not. So, yeah. Well, um, I would think the reason why it is, is because, I mean, you can pursue the game art, of course, but you can do so much more with it. You can branch out to many of the different types of art or any type of design. Uh, you could take the, the how you learn concept art and how you arrange it and you could bring it into movies or television or animated films or anything else. The 3D modeling classes here are just the same thing. I mean, it, you don't have to subdue yourself into game art. I mean, it's nice, but if you could just take a look and just branch yourself out and see how far you can take it, you know, I mean, there's just so much you can do with a games art degree here. You don't have to stick with games art. You could, anything you learn here in Confetti in the games art major, you can transfer into at least 10 different, 10 different careers and flourish in them if you know what you're doing. I was invited, well, going back to 2021, I had a table at uh, MCON Nottingham and it was the first time I was able to have a table in a convention for about two years because of COVID and all that stuff. So. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Nicky Wren, who is an instructor in the FE art classes over at Confetti, he uh, came to my table, we had a nice long conversation, and he asked me if I can appear on Industry Week in March of 2022. Now this is, he asked me in July of 2021, so it was kind of far off. I was like, okay, fine. He wound up contacting me right around late February, early March, and he asked me if I would still be interested, and of course I said yes. Um, which is funny because a lot of the students, they were kind of hesitant in showing up because like, oh, it's just gonna be this. But um, after everything was finished, the, um, 
from what Nikki told me is that my lectures, the two days that I had were the most popular and which blows my mind because um, Linda Perry from Four Non Blondes was here. So I'm like, wait, really? It, it, that's really cool. So um, afterwards I was asked to lecture a couple of more times and then um, about three months ago I was informed that they may be looking for a, a lecturer here. I decided to apply. I didn't think I was going to get it to be honest. So I just applied and I said who I was and showed what I do. And then a couple of weeks later I was hired. And now I'm a full-time lecturer and I'm living out a dream of not only taking the skills that I have and making a living out of it, but hopefully transferring and giving those self-same skills and lessons that I've learned to other students. And with the blessing of everything, hopefully they'll do better than I did professionally and personally. What happens is, is that um, it gives them a glimpse of what their professional life could potentially be. And um, it'll also give them an idea of what they, it also, it also shows them exactly what they didn't expect. That's another thing that's very important. It's, it could be, you could expect one thing when going into a major or going into a, a creative life, but then see the other side of it and maybe either you want to pursue it in a different manner or not pursue it altogether because sometimes it could be a little rough. You know, being someone who's worked in it for about 25 years, I can't say that it's super easy but it's rewarding because you essentially get to do what you love to do, which is draw. You know, I, I can't imagine a better life or a better career than being able to enjoy what you love doing. There's nothing better than that, in my honest opinion. The one thing that I want to make sure that I do is like show them the stages of everything that I do because it's not, it's not just about finishing the work. It's about understanding it. You have to. I mean, you have to understand some of the basics of whatever foundations you're trying to draw. Like if uh, the basics or the foundations and the proportions of a human body, whether it's anthropomorphic or not. Um, dimensions, especially with perspective or perspective grids and composition of the art, comp how the art is laid, how it's colored, the light, the shade. That's something that I've, thankfully, a lot of the students that I have pay strict attention to. And as a result of what I've been showing them, They've been seeing it too, and then they're asking me about things, and then they're telling me that this is what I want to do, but in the terms that I'm demonstrating. And that to me is the greatest reward because that means that they're learning and that they're understanding what I'm trying to say. And that's the best part of teaching is when every single student at one point or another has that eureka moment and go, wow, now I understand it. And they do, which is really great. I had that happen to me twice today. And I'm like, yay, thank you, that's awesome. So yeah. I have so much fun. I mean, I have just as much fun teaching, if not a little bit more so, than I do actually drawing, especially now, because um, one man, when I was at Marvel, taught me everything I needed to know. His name is Keith Williams. He has been an artist at Marvel for about four, five, four and a half decades, easy. And this man has taught me everything that I've ever needed to know when it comes to drawing, when it comes to composing a page, when it comes to composing a figure. All this stuff. I was under his tutelage for a good year and a half after I finished my staff job at Marvel. And as a result of him showing me the ropes and, you know, explaining to me very patiently, I might add, about all the things that I had to learn and all the things that I had to accomplish while I was doing this. But let's just say if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have a career. I wouldn't have any type of career. I wouldn't be able to sniff anything because without his guidance, I'd be lost. And that's the truth. And I am so grateful for him. And if anything, Mr. Williams, the immortal Keith Williams, he, um, as a result of his patience with me, I wanted to aspire to that just as much, if anything, and take the gifts that he gave me and share them with other prospective artists because he wanted me to do better than him. And I don't know if I actually am doing better than him because he's great. And I really don't want to because he's my sin saying that would be weird. But, um, that's what I want for my students. I want my students to do better than I ever did professionally because now there's, another, there's the next generation of artists that are coming around. And there's so many students here that are so talented and so amazing. It's an honor for me to show them anything that I know. And it's an even greater honor when it comes to them listening to what I'm doing and applying it 
in ways that they figure out by themselves. That's one thing you also have to do. You have to give them permission to explore. You don't want to confine any type of imagination or any type of inspiration or anything. Um, when I was a child in Brooklyn, that's where I'm from, um, Brooklyn, New York, not Brooklyn, Georgia, because sometimes that gets confused. Um, my father one day brought home a Captain a Shazam comic book and also a Justice League coloring book. He just decided to do it because I just did it. He just decided to do it because he didn't have any other idea what to get me. I was four at that time. So just out of nowhere, it was just weird. Just out of nowhere, I had a piece of paper with me and a pencil. And I distinctly remember this one thing. I started drawing or trying to copy the superheroes that I saw on the comic book page. Like I was just like looking at the art and then I was trying to draw the muscles and all that stuff. You know, it wasn't great for a four-year-old, but you know, I was trying. And then um, when I had this, the Justice League coloring book, not only did I stay within the lines of the borders of the art, but I also provided a little bit of light and shade, which I thought was really strange. But I still did it anyway. And as soon as I saw all these superheroes being drawn and all this other stuff, I was like, well, I'm hooked. This is what I want. And I did. I mean, when I was a child, I started my own, uh, I st just on my own whims, I decided to start drawing my own comic strips that you would see in the daily newspapers in the in United States. And um, I created my own characters. I had a lot of fun with it. And um, I've been doing that ever since. Uh, yeah, don't quit. Don't give up. Keep drawing. Draw a lot. Draw a lot. Take it on the chin if someone doesn't like your work. Be objective about your own work. Don't believe your own hype. Keep getting better. Keep drawing. Keep practicing because there is no such thing as perfection when it comes to drawing anything. The only thing that you can really do is just get better and better as time goes by. Love the art. Love what you do. If you don't love what you do, if you're only doing it because it seems cool, don't do it. If you truly love what you do and if you truly love creating and you truly love designing everything and having your creative stamp to tell a story that will be some t someday, some way be even more renowned than Star Wars or any other, or the Lord of the Rings or anything, love what you do. That's the main thing. If you don't, then you have to find something else to do. And that's the truth. Uh, we're almost done with this drawing over here. Da -da -da, ba -da 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 -ba -ba.